Many thanks for joining us on News on the Hour on Plus TV Africa. Share other stories making the headlines. I am Benny Ark. The Akita State Task Force on Coronavirus has announced the first death on Nigerian soil, possibly from the deadly coronavirus. The case, an American male fell ill a day after their arrival, and it was taken to a private hospital where he was referred to to a tertiary hospital. Unfortunately, he died from complications of his illness. The statement also reveals a confirmed case of a COVID-19 believed to be infected with driving 27-year-old American Caucasian male who was visiting Nigeria from Richmond, Virginia, USA, in the company of his caregiver, a Nigerian female of equity origin who has tested negative to COVID-19. Meanwhile, preliminary investigations revealed that the pair were driven by the confirmed case to Ibadan, where they stayed for two weeks and arrived at Doikiti, Ekiti State, on 13 March 2020. Joining us live is the Ekiti State Health Commissioner, Dr. Mojishola Yaya Kolade, to throw more light on this new development. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. There are conflicting reports on the account of the suspected case of coronavirus in Ekiti. Can you give us a first-hand information on the case, please? Okay, thank you very much. The, basically, the young man that passed on is a 27-year-old male Caucasian that has other conditions before coming into Nigeria and before coming to Ekiti. He died of complications of his illness. Uh, the test that was performed on him was negative for COVID, but the sample was taken after he passed on, because that was when we were called in. But the chauffeur, the driver that was driving this young man around tested positive. He is a 38-year-old male, a Kiti indigen that lives in Ibadan, or your state. That's what we have. The female companion that accompanying him to Ekiti State is the test is still negative. For the young man that passed on, the test is inconclusive. When the test is inconclusive, that means he may still be negative, he may still be positive, so nobody is sure. All right, Dr. Mujit, now, there were, earlier on, there were conflicting reports about the personality of the person who died. Can you just once again, for the sakes of clarity to the public, just tell us who actually passed on from these complications? Okay, the young man that passed on is a 27-year-old male Caucasian from Virginia in America. Okay. Now, now, what steps have been taken to actually curtail and forestall the spread of this virus in Ekiti State as it is right now? Immediately, we were called on the task force. We started contact tracing. So all the contacts from the private hospital where they took the, the patient to first, we have contacted them. On the other hospital, they are very much aware and everybody is under quarantine. And WHO is supporting, and UNICEF called already, and they will be coming on board to support us too. Now, now prior to this case in Ekiti, um, how prepared was the state government just in case there was going to be a confirmed case in the state? What was the level the, of preparedness? They said we are very, very, very prepared. There is nothing that needed to be done that we are not doing. We have educated people, we are sensitizing people. Our hospital isolation center is being equipped with all the necessary things. And all our doctors and uh, consultants are at a lot. Everybody has been educated on the case management, what to do. And we have an emergency number, which is 112. We instructed everybody, if you see signs and symptoms, we have an emergency center that they can call. Once you call the 112, that number will ring and the medical personnel will get information and will contact the, the maybe infected suspected case and will give them all the required information and what to do. And if they needed to be evacuated, two ambulances have been given by His Excellency Dr. John Cowdery fired me that we will use to evacuate the patient to the isolation center. 
Uh, Dr. Moji, just before I let you go this morning, can, can you tell us the situation report on the driver who drove the American and tested positive and also the caregiver? Are they in isolation right now? Yes, both of them. Actually, the driver is on the section of the isolation center for a confirmed case, and the other lady is on the side for suspected case. So both are in a, there with us in our center. Commissioner for Health, take it to state, Dr. Mojishola Yaya Koladi. Thank you for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you very much. Coronavirus cases in Nigeria on Wednesday increased from three to eight, fueling fears around the country. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniwe, at a press conference in Abuja said four of the five new cases were in Lagos State, while one was in Ikiti State. Haniwe said this just as Lagos and Ogun State governments banned gatherings of over 50 people. Coronavirus was first recorded in Nigeria on February 27, when an Italian businessman who was on a visit to Lafarge Africa PLC, Iwikoro, Ogun State, was diagnosed with a disease and taken to Lagos State, where he is currently being treated. Ondo State Government has confirmed that there is a suspected case of coronavirus in Akure, the state capital, which is being handled at the moment. According to reports, the man is currently being observed at the Accident and Emergency Unit of the University of Medical Sciences Teaching Hospital, Akure, the state capital. Confirming the report, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Wahab Adigbenro, urged the people of Ondo State not to panic as the situation was under control. Adigbenro said there is no confirmed case of coronavirus in Ondo State as we speak, but we're suspecting a case based on the fact that they arrived recently from the United States, and that's all. He says the suspected case is already in isolation and its blood samples to be taken for tests in Lagos. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Government, in agreement with religious leaders, has banned all religious congregational service involving over 50 worshippers. This was part of the communique read by the Commissioner for Home Affairs, Prince Anofio Elegushi, after a meeting with religious leaders in the state at the Bagauda Kalto Press Center, Alausa, on Wednesday. Present at the meeting and briefing were the Lagos Chairman of Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Alexander Bambola, and Grand Chief Imam of Lagos State and other regional religious leaders from all over the state. Also, the Lagos State Government is closing now all public and private schools from Monday, March 23, 2020, as part of preventive measures against the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. The State Commissioner for Education, Fola Shade Adifi Sayo, said in a statement that move became necessary to prevent children and their teachers from getting more vulnerable to the pandemic. It advised parents to also ensure that their children practice social distancing while at home, wash their hands regularly or use hand sanitizers and observe high standards of personal hygiene. She added that the Lagos Incident Command Center will continue to trace all contacts of the identified cases. Following the first suspected case of coronavirus in Katsina State, Northwest governors on Wednesday announced the closure of all schools in the zone. The governors, after a closed-door meeting held in Kaduna, said the closure was for 30 days, noting that it had become necessary in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19 pandemic in the zone. Chairman of the Forum and Katsina State Governor, Aminu Masari, read the communique shortly after the closed-door meeting. Masari said the closure would take effect from Monday, 23rd of March, 2020. According to him, the governors would meet will meet with examination boards to discuss the school's closure. They equally admonish the general public to avoid unnecessary gatherings, urging them as well to maintain good respiratory hygiene. And the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, on Wednesday in Abuja, offered guidance for self-isolation in Nigeria as a country responds to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. Dr. Chikwe Iekweazu, the Director General of the Center, says self-isolation means strictly staying at home or identified accommodation away from situations where a person mixes with family members or the public for a period of 14 days. Iekweazu said that those who should be self-isolated includes anyone returning from high-risk countries with ongoing community transmission and anyone who had been in close contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19. Joining us now by phone is medical practitioner Folajimi Adebowale. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Thank you for joining us on News on the Hour. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. On Thursday, the NCDC confirmed five new cases of coronavirus at the time Nigerians thought it's almost over. What do you think went wrong here? Uh, we must take note carefully that these cases were returnees. That means they had it over in the UK and the US and they came to Nigeria with it. So it's not a case of which we have it from one person going or infecting another person yet. 
All right, now, now, the World Health Organization says Africa should prepare for the worst. Do we have a cost to worry? I will still say that we should not raise any undue alarm. We have a situation at hand. We do not need to panic. And one question that we've not all answered is, when this issue was spreading around the world, why is Africa on behind schedule? Because I believe we are well connected to the world when it comes to travel. So I am very optimistic that we will pull through well through this issue. At the same time, the mortality of this disease condition is very, very low. We have situations and diseases here in Africa, in Nigeria specifically, with higher mortality. Lassa has a higher mortality. So I don't see any reason why we should really be worried about it. Majority of people who get infected with the coronavirus recover. Okay. So... Yeah. Now, many people, many people have argued the fact that we seem to be lagging behind. As before now, prior to this period, many countries already shut down their borders and airports to, to um, domestic flights and inbound tourism. And what do you think the government should have done before now to have prevented all of these um, newfound cases being confirmed? The truth of the matter is, is I believe the government is doing a great job. Countries, developed countries could not contain this in. Most of our attempts at controlling diseases are things I consider blind attempts. You just try to do your best. Sometimes it's a risk benefit analysis. Is the risk really real or just perceived? So you can't blame the government about closing the border because even if you close the border, it will still spread, it will still move. It's, it's not the primary problem we have. When, when you talk about closing the border, or perhaps if they had closed the border, things would have been better. I, I don't agree on that basis. Yes, I mean, some, if they had closed the border uh, earlier. Actually, some countries are, have been registered at high-risk zones. Um, shouldn't we have a, a, a ban restriction, a travel restriction on these countries in coming into our country? Now, you do know that at the airport, we've been having screening for a while. And this has been not so so effective at the same time when you talk about africa and nigeria i told you about the risk benefit analysis possibly they were looking at one or two or three issues that just do we really need to make this move so what i'm looking at in this situation is simple was the late move a problem because you want to ban nigerians from coming back or ban travelers I don't consider that a big issue personally. All right. Now, let, let's, let's but on the issue of isolation, self-isolation. How sure are we that the people being advised to self-isolate can handle the situation or know what to do? Like I said earlier, m most of these attempts are blind attempts. Most of these things we're trying to do. People are not even exactly willing to isolate. So government is trying to bring in, okay, do not go to church. People are canceling events. People are not happy about it. People are still going to try to be in touch with one another. You know primarily we are social beings. So we will just try and do our best, and we pray people will comply. As a public health has expert, can, can you give us tips on what to do during self-isolation? First of all, the minimal, minimal interaction with other people in terms of handshake, in terms of speaking, hugging, um, being in a confined space with another person for too long. Those are the things we need to try and avoid. But you do know that in a, in a country that is not so well developed, where basically some housing um, have, are primarily overcrowded, you have two, three, four people living in the same confined space, we can't really expect much. But I'm happy big events, churches, mosques, uh, and, and clubs will not hold any any event anymore. So individuals will just try and no handshakes, uh, minimize going to big events, and don't stay in a confined space with um, other people, especially people who just traveled. For example, staying in a car, air-conditioned system, with somebody who just returned from the US or the UK, it's, it's, it's real danger. All right. Now, if, if social distancing might be pretty hard for us to observe here, what, what would you advise the government to do more to curtail the spread of this virus? Well, I think we should really work on our healthcare system because 
viral diseases have an issue of being self-limiting. They come, they do some damage, then they go. How well do we contain this damage? We don't have enough ICUs. We don't have enough facilities that will cater for people during the sick phase of this illness. These are very, very important issues. People will need support if they are ill because somehow some of these things are inevitable. But however, we need to pull through this phase and move to the recovery phase. So how, how do you handle that part is very important. Public health expert for Lajimi Adibo Ali, thank you very much for your insightful enlightenment on this topic. It's a pleasure. You're welcome.